Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial with Roaring Records. Today um, I saw a post on Facebook that was talking about the routing of buses in the signal flow in Logic and I just wanted to see if I could help uh, clarify a few things about how buses can be used in Logic. So here I've made a basic basic project in Logic just so we can experiment and see with how signal flow works. So I've got um, five different tracks here um, and my audio track that you're hearing me through. Um, so this is a grand piano and strings combo. We're going to come back to that track in a minute. And here is a set of different strings tracks. So the first thing I want to notice is that if you look in your track inspector, this is just one part of um, of the bigger mixer and you can see the mixer screen has everything on it but right here you're just seeing one channel and where that channel is headed so right now on the studio cellos you've got the studio cello sound and in the very end it's going to your stereo output so you also see the stereo output in the track inspector or the mixer window you'll note that right here is where the sound actually starts this is the creation of the sound wave um, if you took this out it would say the instrument slot so that's where the sound wave is actually being generated um, this is converting your MIDI information into actual sound waves these are the audio effects they go in order everything here is being processed from the top down then we've got these funky thing called buses which we're about to talk about and then we tell the signal where to go and here it's the stereo output or in my case right now it's my headphones so um, that can be changed as well we're going to look at that here in just a minute but we want to understand what buses are so instead of just sending all the information on this channel and loading it up with two different types of reverbs that would get really funky because if you tried to have two different types of reverbs in the in a row you would be reverbing the reverb which doesn't sound very good necessarily so in this instance logic has made a track that has two different types of reverb if I click on bus number one this has now changed from my stereo output to my uh, bus number one and you'll note that because it says bus number one right here in what looks like the instrument slot on this time so you can think that at this point I just drew a cable or plugged in a cable that connected this string signal to the top of this other channel that's called bus number one so at this point the signal splits now the signal does not necessarily split 50 50 or 60 40 it splits 100 percent and 100 percent or you can actually go above 100 percent if you really want to so um, this knob right here controls how much of that signal is being sent to this channel. So at zero, you're getting 100% of the signal sent from, from this channel point to here. Now, 100% of the signal is also flowing further down the chain. Matter of fact, it gets split again right here at bus number five. So now, by clicking on that I've switched this to bus number five so as soon as the signal goes hundred percent to bus number one it continues down at hundred percent here it splits again if we put this at zero now we've got one hundred percent of the signal also traveling to bus five and one hundred percent of the signal continuing to travel to the stereo output now the amount going to the stereo output is controlled by your fader here so there are actually three different places that this signal is going as it comes down the chain bus one bus five and straight to your headphones but you'll notice at the end of bus five it's also going to your headphones and at the end of bus one it's also going to your headphones now let's look at that in the full-on mixer so here is the channel that I'm working with right now the cello channel so 100% of the signal is going to bus number one which I can identify here so you can imagine a little chord sending information over here 100 percent of the signal is going to bus 5 and 100 percent of the signal is going to the stereo output and it's blending them all in on the stereo output now i had a little fun earlier and i actually panned these around so you could keep them uh, dead center 
and you would begin to see um, the signal is jumping here, here, and here. I can keep these knobs equal and get full processing power, but this is where the blending ability is really coming in. Because right now you've got some really hot reverb on this. So I can actually blend in those reverbs and those different processing effects so that they begin to unite into a sound that I actually like. And something that doesn't blow the headroom out of the stereo output. So again, sound emanated here came down to the bus. This allowed us to split it and process it in multiple different ways without having to track uh, three different tracks full of MIDI information, have the computer freak out because we're doing so much MIDI processing. This is streamlining the way the computer is able to think and process things without having to have multiple VSTs open to generate that string sound. That string sound is going three different places and being processed three different ways. So it's just a streamlined um, effect there. Now, the other thing you'll notice is like here is bus number two. Well, none of this here is going to bus number two. Nothing's being sent to bus number two. So where is that information coming from? Well, this is actually called a track stack. And you can tell because it's got a little up arrow right here. So when I click that up arrow, it opens up two different tracks. Let me put the, this away just a second, and you'll see it here. My grand piano track and my strings track. So I can play the string track alone, I can play the grand piano track alone, or I can click on the track stack, and when I play my MIDI note, it triggers both tracks at the same time. Now, you'll notice back in our mixer that at the end of those tracks, instead of sending them to the stereo output, like everything else is, it has now decided that these are going to go to bus 2. So we have rerouted the ending point that instead of going to the stereo output, they're going to bus number 2. So we bus them over here, and they're combined together then and blended, and they now travel down the track where they're prepared by the EQ, and then the pair of sounds is forced to bus 4, 5, and the stereo output. So again, this pair of sounds is traveling over here and then going to three different places. Bus 4, bus 5, and straight to the stereo output. So what happens if you want to make one of those track stacks yourself um, so that you have the ability to process and play one note on your MIDI keyboard and trigger as many different sounds as you want to? Well, you could click on, let's say I wanted to combine all my strings here. Click on the top one, hold Shift, and click the bottom one, then right click and do this create a track stack. Now a folder stack is just a fancy way to hide them all together. Um, I do that with a lot of scratch work I make when I'm recording, but here we want a summing track. So it's actually going to bust them all together into a summing track. And when I hit create, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, I have now got a summing track where I can create one note that plays on all the different instruments and when you look here, they're now all summed on bus 3 before leading to the stereo output, which is another use of busing. If I wanted to add another different bus channel, I could come in here, left click, make a new empty bus. You choose. It doesn't matter. So here's bus 8. I can come in and add some uh, fancy reverb of some kind. some Abbey Road Chambers by Waves. Turn my volume up so the source goes there. Now you can see in my mixer down at the bottom, all of these things are going to bus 1 and 5, then to bus 3, then to bus 8, then to the stereo output, and straight to the stereo output from here. So you just have to make wired connections in your head. You get a very big, warm, resonant sound with that. Hope this made sense. If it helped you out, hit the like button below and feel free to subscribe for more.